Welcome to Care Talk, America's home for incisive debate about healthcare business and policy. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. David, what is trending today? Well, John, not surprisingly, President Biden's plan to fight COVID and particularly Lee, the mandates. What's new? Well, he's, there's mandates, John, big mandates. So mandating federal employees to get the vaccine and contractors to get the vaccine and any company with 100 employees or more is now mandated to have the employees get the vaccine as well. David, I think you're I think you're looking at this whole that your language is all wrong. As Jimmy Buffett said recently, vaccines are the gateway drug to fun. And there's nothing more fun than going to work. And it's going to be a lot less fun if people don't actually uh, get themselves vaccinated. I, I think this is a great idea, David. I mean, this isn't so much a uh, a, a mandate as a, as a, as a, as a as a path to actually guarantee a return to work and to return to kind of a sane economy with if if we're going to kind of leave an an, an 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 uncovered front by allowing unvaccinated people to run riots so will the virus John I think it's a manly mandate and I think actually what's happening is that a lot of companies are actually happy to get a mandate from the top, the same way that the local school boards are happy. Mandate me, baby. Yeah, the same way that the local school boards are happy to hear the guidance from the state so they don't have to fight it out at their level. Say, hey, you know, Governor Baker told me to do it. Governor Lamont told me to do it. Same thing. President Biden told the company to do it. And listen, go complain to him. Anyway, I think it's good, John. I mandate that you get the vaccine. I got mine. We're good. Yeah, I'm going to wait till you give you, you tell me what to do. So, David, what's what's going on with hearing aids these days? Well, John, not as much as going on with hearing aids as should be going on, and as we thought might be going on. But why do he, why why do, why are we even talking about this? Other than your the fact that you're hard of hearing. Aids. Why <laughs> does this? Why does why do hearing aids matter? John, you know, there's something like 37 million adults in the U.S. and over half of people 60 and over who have hearing loss. So it's a big deal. Hey, David, David, it's like 350 million people in the US. There's a ton of people, John, that need hearing aids and they don't have you them. You may not hear them out yeah. there, but they're there. You can see them. Now, the reason you can see them is you can go to the drugstore and get a pair of cheap reading glasses, uh, which is cheap regular glasses if you need them, but you can't do that with hearing aids. Now, hearing aids, John, get this, they cost 2000 to $8,000. Yikes. A pair. That's a lot. And so only- That's a lot of clams. Only about one in four people who could benefit from hearing aids actually have one. Well, it actually, it actually is a serious problem. I've got some hearing loss from a, from a military accident many years ago, but there are, there are uh, and, and the obvious point is that the over 65 population is the fastest growing population in the US. The over 80 is growing even faster. We're living longer. We've got 10,000 people qualifying for Medicare every day uh, with the boomers finally booming into uh, uh, old age. And as you get over 70 or 80, modest to extreme hearing loss is common. And not to make too too sharp a point about it, because it's sort of obvious, what you don't hear, you can't encourage. And, it, and, it, and, and the lack of good hearing or acceptable levels of hearing leads to a lack of socialization, which leads to loneliness which is a chronic condition that can uh, that's that's that can that can accentuate and accelerate other COVID COVID other morbidity factors, um, and can really kind of accelerate physical and mental decline. It's a it's a real issue. He decent hearing is tied to um, socialization, and it's crazy that uh, 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 leaders in healthcare like yourself have prevented people from actually having more access to low cost hearing aids. Well, John, thank you for that compliment. Now, what I'll tell you is that this problem was supposed to have been solved because it was recognized and addressed more than four years ago. There was a law that was actually sponsored by Senator Elizabeth Warren and signed by the former president, Donald Trump, back in 2017. The natural collaborators, Elizabeth Warren, and dear old departed President Trump. So in 2017, this law came in and the FDA was supposed to write rules by 2020 to enable over-the-counter sales of hearing aids. Now they haven't done it yet. How dumb is this, David? We have the technology, it's relatively cheap, it's available. 
We invented a lot of it. It's crazy that we're not lowering the regulatory barriers and accelerating people's access to this. I mean, David, how do you defend yourself? I'm not sure why you're grouping me in with the former president and the current senator, but um, what's happening is- No, 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 I'm saying you are, you are a part of the regulatory healthcare establishment that wants to play by the rules that have always held us back in this particular area from regulation and access to low cost hearing aids, which are an essential part of aging with your, with your, with, with your, with, in society. Well, John, I actually, if, if I had uh, hearing loss, which I, you know, either do or don't, I would prefer to personally go to a hearing professional. And, uh, you know, I would actually like that, that approach. But I do think that, especially for mild hearing loss, that these other OTC devices should be available. Now, you know who else thinks that? Apple and Bose, because they both released devices. Uh, Apple is part of the AirPod Pro, and Bose has a device uh, that actually can be used this way. But they're, they're sort of, they kind of, nobody's really waiting. They can't really exactly wait for the FDA. The FDA was supposed to be done now. So some of these companies are starting to put things on the market, but there's a lot of confusion. Which they should. Yeah, okay. but they, Which they should. But the problem is, John, some of the things are not very good. Some of them are just these uh, sound amplification devices. Yeah, it's like those big horns that you used to see in movies where people yeah. would stick them out. It's And the problem with that is that there's an element of distortion. So gross sounds are not precise and, and understandable. But I think it's great that Apple and Bose are trying to bulldoze their way into this regulated high margin, you know, sort of this 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 ring fenced uh, oligopoly of the regulatory you know, kind of oligarchs of hearing aids. I mean, David, how, again, I'm just appalled that you are supporting this. <laughs> I don't know what, what corner you're trying to paint me in, John. I'll just be clear. I think OTC hearing aids should be available. I personally would not. Oh, you mean want over them. the counter? Or is yeah. there another acronym you want to throw in there to kind of confuse Yeah, everybody? yeah. Over the counter, John. They should be available without a prescription and without having to see um, an audiologist. I personally would see an audiologist for myself. But putting it back on you, John, one of the problems here has been that insurance traditionally has not covered hearing aids. Probably one of your decisions back in your youth. It's No, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think that the insurance should be covering particularly the lower cost alternatives. It would be very easy to create a market, a mass market, if you will. The, the, the best devices are super expensive and super high technology, but the lower cost mass versions could be created. And I, I, I've always supported, and not unlike you, covering it by insurance companies. And the, and the, and the fact is that there is a lot of supplement, supplementary dollars available for managed care plans to actually use as differentiating tools for their sales to actually cover typically uncovered benefits, whether it's dental or OTC um, vitamins or things like hearing aids and food. And I think that opens the way to validate it. And you create a market where there's a lot of demand so that you could actually produce these things at low cost and mass volume. And now's the time to do it because I do think the, the dam is breaking. Um, and you know, there's a lot of areas in the medical industrial complex, which has served you well, David, where regulation supports margin and revenues that prevent access to people of, of, of what they need at a low, a low and reasonable price. And I think now is a great time to focus on this because because in addition to a access at the high end, Apple and Bose, expensive big brands, you could easily see uh, if, if, if insurers were to, to actually get together and do the right thing here, uh, um, create how they could collaborate uh, with incentives and create a market for low cost mass distribution of devices that could really help people stay connected to their to their social groups in society. John, you're you're mentioning that you know, actually, despite the fact what I said that a lot of insurance doesn't cover hearing aids, a lot does, and especially Medicare Advantage and about half of, of Medicaid plans. We haven't spoken so far though about the stigma about wearing hearing aids. And I think that's traditionally been a barrier. People don't want to look like they're feeble. Uh, or disabled by wearing hearing aids. What's your take on that? And is that changing? I, I, I think in a world where everybody's got ear pods or 
big Beats bunny ears or I mean, they the, the at the high end, they're getting hyper precise and small and and you can barely tell that they're there. And in fact, there's a Star Trek element to it. I mean, maybe not with you and I, but with people who look cooler than us, who like those people in the Apple commercials who are skateboarding and skiing and walking up buildings. And they all look so damn happy uh, that with their with stuff in their ears, I think in a funny way, Bose and Apple are going to make hearing aids cool. Not for you and me, that that would be too high a bar, but for 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 others. Yeah, I actually think that's right. Um, and one of the reasons to get the consumer players in there is not just uh, to keep the price down or to bring it down, but actually to improve the usability and to reduce the stigma and make them cooler and more fun and frankly, incorporate them uh, just into routine consumer devices. It doesn't have but to be a separate device. got to actually get the word out there that 75% of people who should have hearing aids don't. Uh, and, and I mean, I was almost at demand and make sure they hear us, but to make sure that they and their families understand that this is a solvable problem and could directly tie to less loneliness and uh, lower co lower comorbid conditions and, and 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 help kind of age gracefully. I mean, not like again, not like you and I, David. We're not aging gracefully. Yeah, but, forget but that. For, for, but for those seventy five percent who need it, that's the message that needs to get out there. And then let's yeah. get some incentives out there that create a market at uh, at at a, at a lower cost point. Well, John, I agree. Let's let's get the FDA to do its job. No reason uh, why they shouldn't get these standards out there. Uh, let's do things like we're doing here with our podcast, which, by the way, uh, there's captions available for it on YouTube. Um, and uh, people can listen uh, or watch. And uh, I'm going to get my uh, my hearing aid, John, and you may well be wearing one right now without me what? even knowing it. What? <laughs> yeah. All right, John, that's not funny. But in any case... That's it for yet another edition of Care Talk. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite service. Bye.